Welcome to another episode of Takedown Live here on True Blue. I'm Chris Hansen, and joined this evening, me, is Gabrielle Hansen, my co-host here and in life in general. Yes. Gabrielle, thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We have a lot to go through tonight. First of all, we're going to talk to Sean Reck, my uh, co-founder of True Blue and the president of True Blue, about some exciting new developments here. But just so you know, we're going to look at some of the more recent cases, the predators we've caught. We're going to go behind the scenes. Then we're going to talk about a brand new show premiering here on True Blue with Sheriff David Clark. Very excited about that. And our passion project, Sextortion. We're going to have with us as our live guests, parents of a young man who sadly took his life, the victim of sextortionists a half a world away. And, and these are uh, people, the Woods family, who I've gotten to know through our documentary, mm -hmm. and I know you've been wanting to talk to them as well. So yes. we're, going to, we're going to get into all that and more. But first, let's check into the studio next door with Sean Rack. Sean, tell us about this new development here at True Blue with the acquisition of another streaming crime network that is going to make us bigger and better. Thanks, Chris, and hello, everyone. Um, yeah, we've been working on this for about, uh, since we started seven months ago. Um, two years ago, a network was uh, begun called the American Sheriff Network. It was put together by Sheriff Mark Lamb in Arizona. Also um, involved with that network was uh, Sheriff Chris Swanson of Genesee County, Michigan, who we work with quite a bit. And they have a show called Iron Sheriff and f had 53 episodes of that program and they had thousands and thousands of subscribers. And we have acquired that network and we're merging it with True Blue. So you've got more programming. You can see all of the American Sheriff Network programming on watchtrueblue.com, which only costs $4.99 a month. And uh, we'll be joined by thousands of their subscribers whose memberships will auto automatically be converted to True Blue memberships. So we really uh, are excited about that development, and that just happened last week. So uh, welcome, American Sheriff Network subscribers, to the True Blue experience. Um, to those of you watching on YouTube, understand that we do have a paid streaming service, what they call a subscription video on demand service. That's $4.99. You can log in at the website, watchtrueblue.com, and then you can <clears throat> You can log in on any app after you sign up. You can log in through an iPhone, through Apple TV, uh, Samsung Smart TV, Roku, um, a, 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 any app you can think of. You can uh, We have one on there for you to watch. So just know that uh, that's going to be available. Um, we sell shirts, and we give you giveaway stickers at the True Blue store, which is uh, TrueBlueSwag.com. Um, and if you go on there, uh, uh, keep your eye out on our socials. We're going to be giving out a coupon here um, within 24 hours for $10 off any order. Um, so that brings the shirt, the shirt price down to you know under $15. Uh, if anybody's uh, interested in helping to promote True Blue, we'd, we'd appreciate it. Be sure to send your questions, and Chris will tell you a little more about the organization that's going to get the. Uh, uh, the money that you donate um, if you ask a, a super question on YouTube. So uh, that's it for the announcements. Um, and back to you, Chris. Thank you, Sean. You know, Gabriel and I were talking earlier about this big issue of sextortion, mm -hmm. and it affects so many families. We were talking earlier, and there have been some, what was it, 7,000 reports in 2022 along, alone of sextortion. There have been 3,000 confirmed cases, and at least a dozen young men 
have committed suicide because of this. That we know of. That we know of. Right. And, and likely many, many more, according right. to law enforcement. Sadly. I mean, th knowing the way these stories go I and, and why these kids that we know of that have taken their own lives, I... I I would bet there's going to be more. We're going to talk about all that in a moment with the Woods family. But as Sean mentioned, if you do ask a super question tonight on YouTube and you do donate, tonight's um, funds collected will go to the Do It For James Foundation in memory of James Woods. And, and when you hear this story, uh, and I've sat too many times in the last several months with parents listening to these tragedies, uh, you'll be outraged, and you'll want to do something about it, and we encourage that. But first, yes. before we get into all that, and the Woods will be here along with the local police chief uh, in Streetsboro, Ohio, who investigated this case, we want to take a look at some of the recent predator cases, the predators we've caught. And the first one we want to take a look at is the case of Jared. The devil made me do it, Jared. The devil made me do <laughs> yes. it, Jared. Yes. Um, if you haven't seen the episode, I encourage you to go to True Blue and, and check it out. But Jared was a guy who surfaced in our investigation recently in Genesee County, Michigan. Uh, Sheriff Chris Swanson has his ghost team. And uh, they had a sting operation. And this guy is talking to a teenage girl decoy, a decoy posing as a teenage girl, for two days, essentially. And he's a truck driver, and he's delivering massive uh, building products. And he keeps saying why he can't show up, but ultimately he does. And, and I want you to take a look at this, this clip from the video because it's, it's an excuse that I've never heard before. Go ahead. Why tonight did you agree to meet somebody who said they were a teenager? It seemed like it turned you on based upon the chat here, Jared. Yeah, it didn't turn me on. It didn't dissuade you from driving your truck all the way over here. Correct. At any point, you could have said, nah, it's a bad idea. I'm going to go home to my wife. I actually did feel like it was a bad idea. You did? Yeah. But you came anyway. Yeah, you're right. Explain I, that to me, Jared. I, I'll, I'll explain it to you. Okay. So I vowed to my wife, mm -hmm. and I broke that vow. Now Satan wants me to go a little further and a little further. And so therefore, I came. I felt like it was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. But. But the devil made you do it. He, well. He lured me in here. I come into the house with a conscience. If if this seemed to be a little fishy, I was walking out. I'm serious. Fishy how? Well, because in the ad it was 19. She stated that she was 15. Right. So, so you knew she was 15. She told right. you this. Well. So you could have said, time. whoa, I'm not going to do this. It's wrong. You're 15. That I would did. be illegal for I a 30-year-old to have her, sex with a 15-year-old. I told her right away. I said, that's illegal. I said, I'm not. I, actually, I didn't say it's illegal. I said, I'm not having sex with anybody that isn't 18. Right. But Satan made you do it. Well, Satan urged us along, and you're right. I needed this wake up. You needed this wake up? Yeah, I did. How did Satan make you do this? Because Satan wants us to do a little more and a little more. Mm-hmm. In nearly 20 years of investigating men who try to have sex with children, predators, that's the first time I've heard the devil made me do it. He's clever. It's a good one. It is, but it didn't wash. No. No. What struck you most about uh, this fellow, Jared? So many things. Um, first of all, always, you know, that's not what he was coming there to do. And I think the disturbing part in all these are the conversation he was having with a, he knew she was 15, although he says, right, she's 19 over and over again to you, like they always do. But they don't think about at 15, this is shock, this would be shocking. The conversation, the video he sent her. Right, he essentially sent a, a pornographic video of right, himself. Right, to a 15 year old. Right, like uh, that's, he sent a video of himself masturbating basically. And so that doesn't occur to these guys that that would be shocking? Well, it might be the first exposure to sexually explicit material that a child has. And, it, and which normally, is yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just that, much less coming Just over to that, consummate right. the relationship. Yeah, I, I found that disgusting. I mean, I find them all disgusting. Um, but that, you know, he mentions he's married to a good woman and. Has a child. Has a child, a one year old or barely one year, one year old. But he, it feels like in the video you see him think about this Satan made me do it idea. 
like he's heard that before, that the devil will tempt you and tempt you and tempt you. And it seems like he came up with that idea, like that's going to get him out of it. You know, because these things happen so quickly when I'm right. in the moment, I, I don't always get the chance to analyze it like we are now and, and to right. pick it apart. But I suppose that he had, you know, a couple of days to figure out yeah. what's going to happen if this was some sort of a sting. Now, he had no idea who I was. No. Unlike a lot of these right. guys. Right, right. But the other thing that happened with uh, Jared is that in the course of the discussion, and again, he's not quite sure who I am or what I'm up to, and, and he cops out to the whole thing, but he wants to call his wife. And so he literally takes out his cell phone, and we're rolling, and he's going to call his wife. That had to be a first, too. That had, it was a first. Yeah. And I don't know whether it was unfortunate that she didn't pick up when we didn't capture this moment, or whether maybe you know, we didn't want was, to exploit collateral damage right, of, of a wife who's right, victimized here, right, you know. Right. Uh, and the collateral damage, as you know, is something that right. I don't think we talk about enough. What happens no, to these I guys, think I do children think, and, and wives and yeah, families? Yeah, I, I, th I think that's just as interesting sometimes Sometimes would be to, find, to look at the collateral uh, damage. We're going to do that on one of these live shows yeah. coming up, I promise you. But, but he, he makes the call. She doesn't pick up. So now I'm through with the interview, and I step away, and the Genesee County ghost team does what it does and starts to take him into custody. He's got handcuffs on, and she calls back. Oh, my God. So now everybody's looking at each other, and, I, and I'm out of it at this point. Right. I mean, ethically, professionally, standards-wise, you know, I've already had my interview. Right. And it's time to let law enforcement do its job. Mm -hmm. And so collectively, everybody sort of says, well, we'll let him sort it out with his wife later at the, at the substation. So I'd that's like what to know how there. that went. You know, and he, he said, too, um, he's cheated on his wife before. And so, again, I feel like that the devil made me do it. He's had that in his chamber as well. Like, I'll come out with that, and she'll understand it. Because you ask him about going to church. He says he goes to church. And I feel like he learned something about using that as an excuse, but didn't have it all the way figured out. Well, the other excuse that he gave was that he and his wife both had, and I think it was much more for him than his wife, I, I'm not implicating yes. her in any of this or suggesting there was some sort of open marriage here, but they had this, um, how did he put it, this um, not like a integrity following. check. Right. So in other right. words, if yes. he had gone to uh, sexually explicit website or site or a chat facility platforms of some sort, it would alert his wife. And for some reason, the subscription just ran out. Oh, I thought he said he shut it off. So it, it ran I out. Think, I think what he said was the subscription uh, ran out mm. and that he had failed to renew it or he got a new phone and didn't download the app or something like that. So just conveniently, mm, he didn't have shocker. that protective app. And mostly we worry about putting these apps on phones and devices for children, but here's a guy who probably should have one on his own phone. Well, I mean, he had obviously, he said he cheated on her before, right. you know. But it, 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 that's, this is a whole new level, though, going to Well, the right, after 50. Presuming this is the yeah. first time he did it. Right, right. But I feel like his, he kept giving you that as a, I always feel like they're going to, talk to you enough that you're going to be like, okay, we're going to let you go. Like, nothing bad's going to happen. We're going to let you go. We've never let anybody go. But that's what they are trying yeah, to do. I think do. that's what they hope. Yeah. 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 So there was another guy in that investigation <laughs> who did know exactly who I was. Yeah. And his name is Clifford. Clifford. He was an older fellow. And he provided an excuse that I've heard before. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to play a little clip of Clifford, then we're going to tell you what his wife does for a living, which is rather shocking. shocking. Mm -hmm. What were you doing online today talking to somebody about sex, Cliff? I don't know. Just a brain fart, stupid idea. And I don't do this. I don't... I you just, don't do this? No, I just seen it and I thought, well... Well, it started out at 19. She was 19, so... I thought, you know what, I can't have sex, I can go over, we can talk, and maybe, you know, I don't know. Do you know how many times I've heard that excuse? Clear? No, seriously, seriously. Do you know how many times I've I heard know, the excuse? I know, I know you've heard it a lot, I know. Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. I'm not lying, I can't. 
But why know. even get online and open yourself up to this kind of trouble, Cliff? Explain that to me. I don't know why. It's stupid, I guess. Stupid. Uh, well, I don't know why I would do that. I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting there. Well, I'm, you got to tell me. There's a reason why you did it. You got online. You had the chat. You talked about oral talk. sex, giving and getting well. oral sex. Well, I know, but I wouldn't even do that because I can't even get hard. I, but you could give oral sex. I you know, talk about I do that because I'm afraid to catch something. You talk about whether or not she's clean. Well, she said, are you clean? Goes, I'm clean. I never said, are you clean? She said, are you clean? And I goes, I'm clean. Everything you say in this chat indicates to me that you were here to have sex with a 15-year-old girl. I can't have sex, though. Okay, but why get involved in it? I don't know. I, help me to understand, Cliff. I don't know. I don't know isn't I a good answer. I was home working on my deck, and I just seen that, and I thought, you know. You, see, you had to go to a place to see it, though. Right, right. So what are you doing there? <clears throat> just looking. I mean, I can look. Doesn't cost me nothing to look. Looking is looking. Showing up to have sex with a fifteen-year-old girl is showing up to I, have sex with a fifteen-year-old girl, and it's a felony, Cliff. I know it's a felony, but I can't have sex. That's, and I, honest to God, I can't. That has to be the fourth or fifth time mm -hmm. somebody has told me, "Well, I can't perform," so obviously I couldn't do it, so I'm not guilty. But uh, call me jaded. Mm -hmm. But I gotta believe if there was a willing teenage girl there and Cliff, mm -hmm. he shows up, mm -hmm. she asks for a soda pop, he brings a soda pop. Yeah. Uh, there was no indication, at least initially, that he brought condoms or Viagra or anything like no, that. No, I was gonna ask you that. Yeah. So none of that was in his car. None of that was in his car. But they're not gonna just sit there and talk, I don't think, right? No, he said he was just gonna give her the pop. <laughs> And then go. And at one point he says, I'm just going to take the pop, drink the pop, and go. <laughs> no. Now, you've watched all the tape on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was there for it. Right. You've heard it from me and your own independent right. look at it. I right. Mean, I, 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 Again, you know, he says this just popped up while he's working on his deck. Um, I, I, don't, I don't imagine stuff like that pops up while you're just working. You go looking for it while you're working, which is disturbing. Right. And he says, um, he over and over again, he doesn't do this. He's never done this. He, you know, it's not what he does. But he also says in there, well, this is what I do. I talk to people. That's suspicious. Yeah, but he was in a, in a place. And, and to clarify, and I think most of you get this, but some of these social platforms, you need to say that you're of a certain age to get on. And in some of them, it's 19. So kids will routinely lie to say they're 19 to get on the platform. Right. And then in this case, the decoy makes it abundantly clear right. numerous times that they're underage and that right. this would be illegal. And there's always chatter about, I could get in trouble by doing this. Or, You're not a cop, are you? This isn't a Chris Hansen right. thing, is it? <laughs> and they no, who's up. that? Yeah. And he knew right away who he I did. was. Yeah, because he said he was screwed and... He's going to be in trouble, and right, right out, right as soon as he saw you, he was like, "I'm going to get a, I'm getting divorced." <laughs> like he yeah. knew, he was it's like the one predator in Fairfield years ago, and he finishes with me, and he goes to the yeah. uh, police department, and they're interviewing him. It's mm -hmm. marital status, uh, okay. married, soon to be divorced. Yeah. 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 So the other thing you need to know, and if you haven't seen this episode, it's out now on True Blue. So go there and check out the entire episode. It, it's really quite compelling. Um, is that Clifford's wife? actually works for the Michigan Supreme Court. Yeah, and that didn't scare him to, you know. The highest no. court in the state of Michigan, right? Well, and she works she's, there. She's not a judge, but she works there. No, but she works as, yeah. as, as, yeah. as a clerk. No, person. yeah, I mean, and he the worked there. He volunteered there at one point, too. At a different courthouse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I mean, imagine, uh, again, you talk about collateral damage. Right. What must a wife go through when they see their husband in a predator state? He has grown kids that he said are going to disown him, which, yeah, you know. But he mentions, too, like, you know, it, it comes up over and over again, like, you know, are you clean? I'm clean. To me, that shows intent, too. Like, that's not it. Well, why would you ask the question? You wouldn't ask the question. People that aren't doing, you know, suspicious things aren't asking people if they're clean unless you know you're going to do something. I, I found it, you know... Very, it's it's guilt. <laughs> right. Well, the whole conversation yeah. is so, I mean, that's why these guys so often plead guilty 
to get past it if they don't have a criminal it. record. It, it's difficult to take these things to trial because of the transcripts of the transcripts. And again, right, so they, the, like Jared too, and Cliff, they say that they say they're 19, they say they're 19, but over and over again. 15, 15, right. 14, 13, right. whatever so it is. Right, yeah. so they think that you're not looking at that before this happens? Well, and on top I'm of that, surprised. right, in these particular investigations, as in all of them, uh, there is an on-site decoy. And in this case, it's a youngish-looking mm -hmm. female deputy or somebody associated with the sheriff's department who poses as the child. And, and they're not scared when they walk in. No. They're enthralled with this on-site decoy. Right. Well, and then, but Clifford does turn around to walk out. Very well. Early. He heard something, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. He he was he Still, got he showed up with the fake opal. He got janky, and that's when I walked in. Uh huh. And he said, "I got to leave." He, I said, I, "I don't instantly. think that's a good idea." You know, which is always a delicate dance for me because, oh, what you know, are you gonna do? I can't hold him. I don't mm -hmm. have law enforcement authority. Now, if, if he tries to leave, obviously law enforcement is going to step in. The sheriff's... Uh, Which I have to say, in. the sheriff guys, I'm always blown away at how amazing they are with these guys. They're very professional. Yes. And and also, you know, very delicate in the way that they... Like Clifford, they handle a little different. They're always great. Right. And nobody's... Well, Clifford was 68 and not going to run. Yeah. Going to be 69 that week. Yeah. It's uh, a bad birthday. God, can you imagine? That's a bad birthday. It's a very bad birthday. And, and I, I agree. In, in each jurisdiction where we work... Mm -hmm. Florida, Michigan, Ohio, the other jurisdictions where we have stings going, they're so professional. And these guys will get agitated with me. And I'm pretty good at you know, being an uh, anesthesiologist and hovering these guys mm -hmm. in between life and death. But these detectives go in there, and yeah. they really diffuse the situation. Yeah. And they're able to get these guys out of there. And that's that's Well, real you do too. The way that they start off and the way they end, their demeanor. Right, but they still think with me they might be able to get out. Run if they can't. Mm -hmm. I think talk Clifford their way out thought of it. that he, he said it I'm sorry a thousand times. I think Clifford thought that you were gonna let him go. Yeah. Yeah. No. Sorry, Clifford. Not this time, Clifford. No. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, we want to hear from you guys, and I know you're watching, and, and uh, you have some questions, and Sean Reck has been monitoring that from the other studio. Sean, what do you have? Chris, we, we're going to do three on this, on this uh, question break. I'm going to answer the first one. Someone said, can you add the Xbox app? Uh, the answer is yes, we can if there's enough demand. So if our viewers out there who are subscribers to the actual paid service tell us to add the Xbox app uh, with enough force, you know, it's not cheap, but we, uh, we will definitely consider doing it. There's a, an Xbox and a PlayStation app um, that we can add to the other seven platforms that we're already on. And then uh, two more for Chris. Um, one that's a common theme right now, what happens to the food and drinks that the predators bring? The food and drinks that the predators bring is take, taken as evidence. People ask all the time, well, do you ever eat the snacks or drink the food or, mm, no, that would never happen. Yeah. And there are enough bad stories of predators doing things to the food and drinks to, oh, to make you not even consider that. But it, it is evidence in all seriousness. So it's taken by the detectives, it's marked as evidence, it's put in the evidence room and kept if needed later for trial. But we never, I never even touch it. Don't eat the pizza, don't, don't eat, the eat the cookies, the pizza, don't drink the lunch. No McDonald's, right. no fast food. No. no. And no you're whatever. hungry some of those nights. Some of those times we are, yeah. but we have snacks in the Predator Oh, house. right, yeah. right. Usually checks Mix just and some other those. things that we, <laughs> we graze on in the long hours between visitors. Right. Sean? So here's another one. Uh, now you YouTubers did not see this episode, but for those on the, uh, who pay for the streaming network, Jason asks, in the last episode on WatchTrueBlue.com, is that a picture of Glory Hole Jerry on the table? Uh, yes, it was, <laughs> and, and very observant of you. Did I tell you this story? Yes, by the way? yes, right. so, it's great. Some of my uh, crew members, uh, you know, we bring obviously props to the shoots because we need to, you know, make it look like a home, and sometimes they're already furnished right. uh, these homes and sometimes they're uh, less furnished and so we have you know props that we bring with whether it's a beanbag chair or a couch or tables or anything else and someone on the crew took a picture of one of the past predators we've caught in this case glory mm -hmm. hold uh, Jerry and put him in a frame and <laughs> put it in the in, on the set and so just in 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 uh, in honor of uh, glory <laughs> hold Jerry who is a predator who was caught in uh, Monroe County Michigan 
uh, you may remember he, he posed as a 19-year-old and tried to get a young boy to come over to his, mm -hmm. his uh, home to engage in sex involving a glory hole, and he had a whole story as to why he was innocent. And Now, do the viewers think that if the picture was there that they showed up to his house or just that the guy had I well mean, I, I, I think I think the viewers figured out that you know <laughs> we were just, having a little, yeah, right. little production production fun with it very observant though dark humor. yeah, yeah. It, it sure it sure was mm -hmm. well thank you guys for those questions and we'll get back to you more in a little bit but we wanted to talk now uh, and you met uh, Sheriff David Clark yes. earlier we had lunch yes. with him earlier uh, David Clark is a former sheriff in Wisconsin uh, four-term sheriff uh, very Pro-law enforcement, as you would imagine. Uh, Milwaukee cop, detective before that. Solved murders. Uh, and a lot of violent crime happens in Milwaukee. So he became sheriff, and he made national headlines for, for really calling it the way he sees it. Mm -hmm. And we were fortunate enough to, to meet him and get to know him. And he is actually the host of a show where we take you behind the scenes of some of these very compelling, shocking in some cases, videos of police encounters. And earlier today I sat down with David Clark and I talked to him about this upcoming show here on True Blue. Take a look. Sheriff, first of all, welcome to True Blue. It's my pleasure. I'm glad to have you a part of the family. Thanks, it's an honor, it really is. 40 years in law enforcement, Milwaukee PD, four terms of as sheriff. You've seen a lot in your career. Your new show on True Blue takes viewers behind the scenes and you put some perspective on these body cam videos, very dramatic videos from law enforcement agencies all around the country. And, you know, I think I've seen a lot of them, but in, in screening some episodes of your show, it's really stunning. I mean, it's chilling to see some of these videos. It's unbelievable, even to me, having right. been in law enforcement for 40 years, and I've dealt with the death, you know, the carnage, the blood, the guts, and all that stuff. I worked homicide division uh, with the Milwaukee Police Department. I was a supervisor of the homicide unit. I worked uh, a unit that dealt with all police, deadly use of force. So I've been at these scenes. I have uh, interviewed officers who have gone through it. But when you see some of the stuff that people will see in this, uh, this new series, it's one of the reasons I'm excited about it. I mean, even I'm looking like, wow, this is incredible. And I think people will get a bird's eye view. You know, you, they hear about it, you know, police officer shot so-and-so the other day, whatever. But when you see it, and, and when you see in some of these videos, law enforcement officers are being killed, and you see that, and for me, it hits home because only by the grace of God did I make 40 years. I was a street cop early on before I got into management. You know, there but for the grace of God go I. And that's what I say every time I, I hear of a law enforcement officer losing their life in the line of duty um, or their career ended because of something that was out of their control and the decision they had to make. I say to myself, there but for the grace of God go I. And you know, I, I guess I was, was blessed to have lasted 40 years without being in that situation. What do you think is most important for people to get out of this series? The human aspect of law enforcement officers, these people aren't machines. Um, you think what we put them through, and they chose this, don't, don't get me wrong. Cops don't want anybody to feel sorry for them. They don't want that. They don't see themselves as heroes. That's for somebody else to, to say. They don't see themselves that way. All they want to know is that they're going to have the support of their agency and the political support needed should something arise, a, a bad outcome through no fault of their own, and or they lose their life, that their families are going to be taken care of, and that their life, they didn't give up their life, the ultimate sacrifice, we call it, for nothing. Or, or in vain, so to speak. So uh, I think when people see this, because like I said, I've 
I've seen it, not just these videos, body cams. When I started in police, there were no body cameras, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm still blown away. And so I, I, I want people to, to understand how difficult, you know, you hear these things, uh, phrases in law enforcement, you know, split second decisions. You'll hear these phrases in landmark Supreme Court cases, U.S. Supreme Court cases about the use of force and about policing and so on and so forth. Uh, it is really a split second decision. And, and, and when, you, when you actually have to see that because human beings, we're visual creatures. Our eyes are our strongest sense. You know that phrase, seeing is believing? Not hearing is believing. It's not saying is believing. It's not smelling is believing. Seeing is believing because it's our strongest sense. And so uh, to actually get to see this stuff uh, as it happens and has it, as it rolls down, and how quickly things can go to hell in a hurry, I, I think people are gonna be, they're gonna be blown away by some of this stuff and so they'll have a better understanding of what a law enforcement officer goes through. Well, you have our trust here at True Blue Sheriff and I'm glad you're part of the team. Looking forward to it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. The show is Cops Under Fire, coming soon here on True Blue. There is a crime wave now in our country, a different sort of crime wave, and one that we have become very passionate about uh, investigating and uncovering. It is called sextortion. It is a crime where the con men, the criminals, the killers are a half a world away, sometimes in Eastern Europe, sometimes in Western Africa. And they've devised a way to target vulnerable teenage boys whose minds aren't completely formed and who can be alarmed easily, who are very attached to their social media identities. They pretend to be young women and they show them a suggestive picture. They get the boy to send one back and then comes the extortion. Mean, vicious, they'll go to no limits. They'll get $100, $200 out of each of these kids and shame them to the point of actually committing suicide. One greeting parent told me it's like somebody invaded my home from Nigeria, my home in northern Michigan, my home in suburban Ohio, my home in South Carolina where I don't have to lock the doors, and committed murder, the murder of my son. I have rarely been so passionate about a subject. Gabriel and I talk about it all the time as parents, as journalists, we want the world to know about this. And, and among the very brave parents who've spoken out, Timothy and, and Tamaya Woods, and, and I wanna thank you for being on the show tonight. And they're joined by Trisha Wayne, who is the police chief in Statesboro, Ohio, which is a, uh, uh, Streetsboro, I'm sorry, I always say St. Saint, uh, but Streetsboro, Ohio, which is a suburb here in Cleveland. And, and your son James fell victim. Mm -hmm to such a plot uh, just around Thanksgiving of last year. First of all, give me a sense of James. We, we've interviewed you before, obviously, for our, uh, our major documentary series that's coming out uh, soon. But, but tell me about James, the young man. Well, he was a 17-year-old kid, always happy, always smiling, joking around, hanging out with his friends. You know, he went to parties all the time, uh, laughed, danced. You know, they drove around going to fast food restaurants, movies, you know, video games. Just 17 year old boy. Yeah, 17, just, yeah. Just a regular kid like everyone else. Yeah. Good grades, good athlete. Decent grades. I'm not going to look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 could, they could, could always be better, be better yeah. <laughs> right. but, but he was a, a, a very um, wonderful athlete. I love yeah. to watch him run, um, and he did it with tenacity. Um, he knew that he could be better, and he took yeah. it upon himself to run, and he ran year-round. Um, my son was just a, a beautiful human being. Uh, he would say hi to whoever um, yeah. came across. Their, um, it didn't matter the age. It didn't matter what you look like. It didn't matter what condition you had. Um, he acknowledged each person as an individual of what they were. You know, and I shared this with Gabriel right after we did the story. James is not only your only child, mm -hmm. but there was a time when you weren't sure you were able to have children. 
Right. Well, well sort after. Of. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so um, when we were pregnant with James, he actually was supposed to have Down syndrome. And um, it was a very um, high, high risk pregnancy in that sense. Um, and they had to make sure that he was growing the right way. And of course, he ended up being like 6'1, 6'2. So <laughs> it was, he turned out just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He turned out just fine, but um, we could never have any kids after that. Uh, it, I ended up having um, different problems. And, he was he our, was your one he and was, only. He was one and only. And I will always say I had to take care of him so I stay out the nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was our one and only. Take me back to the day, Timothy, when this tragedy occurred. How did you find out that your son had taken his own life? I had came home from work. Uh, I was at work from about 5 or so in the morning got off around 6 p.m., came home, you know, I noticed the light was on in the house that shouldn't be a light on, and I walked in, opened the door to where the room was, and I found him laying there, unalived. Uh, it, it was like one of the weirdest things I ever seen, because... How do you even process I, that? I, I don't know. I don't think I did at first, because... Sometimes I do come home and he would be in my room, you know, laying there asleep. But this time, he he wasn't asleep, and it. I screamed, you know, James, and he didn't wake up. I don't know why I screamed, but because I, I knew he wasn't there, but I still did it anyway, just to you know startle him so that he could get up and go walk the dogs or something, but. I, I don't know. And you had to break the news to your wife. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I crawled over to him because I, I was on my hands and knees crying. I crawled over to him and I, I laid on him for a minute or so. And I finally got the strength to pull my phone out my pocket and call his mother, my wife, to let her know that our child our one and only child that we could ever have is no longer here. Tamaya, I, I, I just can't, and again, uh, we approach this as parents um, as well as reporters, but uh, I can't imagine the, 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 the catch in your chest. I uh, still have it there. It hasn't went away. It hasn't went away. I think in my mind, you know, okay, I warned people about sex extortion. Can I have my son back now? Yeah. You did your job. I did my job. I want my son back. He's supposed to be going to college in August. You had been visiting and talking about colleges with him, That right? day. That day. That day. So was it a school in particular that you had gone to or was So Warrensville Heights had a HBCU okay. college fair. It was over 20 colleges there. My last words to James, I, so James and I went and um, we got up that morning and it was bands playing and everything. Mm -hmm. And then after a couple of performances, they have the kids go down and each college has a table set up. And I told him then, James, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you now. I said, because if I stay here, I'm going to choose a college for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I told him I was going to leave. I said, ask questions. Make sure what do you know what they can do for you, you know. See if you can run. Well, he knew he was running track. Cause he, right. was, he was going into he this year. He was that year. good. Yeah, wow. he, he was going to run. He was going into this year. He was um, 12th in the state. Um, looking at his numbers, um, his numbers from last year, he would have finished fifth without any improvement wow. in the state. But um, I told him that. And then I left and went to brunch with my cousin and aunt. He called me and followed up and 
Um, he told me three colleges. It was Howard Fisk in Central State. Great schools. Yes, and I and um, he said I'm even thinking about going to join a fraternity. I, I met a fraternity guy, and my last words to him was, "Baby, I knew you could do it. I'm so proud of you." And I heard the smile, like I heard right. a smile in the phone. Knowing that this was going on, now now you know that somebody was extorting him. When we were in the college fair planning his future, they told him, get away from her. He said, yeah. I can't, yes. They said, where's, your mo where's our money? We need our money now. He said, I can't, you can read the innocence in his, in his messages. And, it said, and he said, I cannot, I'm with my mom. And they said, get away from her now and give These me These are my the extortionists money. Yes. who we think were in West Africa. Yes. And was he acting like nervous or anxious while? No, he was on his phone. And I told him, get off your phone. I said, baby, get off your phone. Right, I kids said, are on their phone. That's, that's, that's what they do with it. And then what's ironic is I, he put up his phone, and then I pointed to everyone in the, in the gym, and more than 50% had their phones out and was on their phone. Mm -hmm. So it was not like it was like no, a red flag. No, no, that's no. the age. That's it's, what kids yes, do. Yes, that's what they do. What? Looking back, Timothy, were there any warning signs of this? Or, or, or it, was, it was all after the fact, really, because how would you know? And see, uh, we, we talk to them every day. You know, we're good parents. Yeah. You know, we I've been in your them. home. I know, what, I know who I, I'm talking to here. I sit there. I play video games with them all the time. So we talk about stuff, some stuff we don't tell her about. But, you know, we had a relationship where... I talk to him, he talks to me, he gets whatever he has off his chest, you know, I say, hey, you know, just be respectful when you say whatever it is you got to say, but always tell us, you know. So you, and, you had taught him to come to you? Yeah. Oh, with, yes, right. yes. I, we told him, hey, we're, right. your two, we're your two biggest fans. Right. We, we'll do anything for you. Help him. And he saw that. Right. Like, he knew that. Right. We had his back 100%. He knew that. This basically went down as a template of all the other sextortion cases. They pretended yeah. to be a girl, mm -hmm. sent him a suggestion well, picture. No, in there, his case... It was a girl. Yeah, so in his case, he was instant messaged. And when he opened the message and started conversing with the person, she offered for them to get on video together. Right. So he could physically see that he was actually talking to who was in the picture. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't catfish. There was no so pretending or anything. So he knew enough anything. to ask he, for that. Well, well, she offered. She offered. As to, part of the scam. As part yes, of the scam. as part of the so scam. So she was in she, on it. Uh, yes. Yes, she offered to show. And the picture that they had of James wasn't a picture that James sent to them. It was yeah. screenshot. From the video. From that, the okay. video. And they, how he found out that they screenshotted the video is after they got off of the phone, they sent a picture of himself to him right. and said, we have you now. We own you. We own you. We own you. Your life is over. Start to finish, how long between the scam the beginning and the end. Yeah. Uh, shortly after 7 p.m. on the 18th of November is when it started. And the finale was around 4.30-ish the next day on the 19th. Mm. Oh, my God. Chief, these are incredibly difficult cases to investigate and prosecute because basically your perpetrator is a half a world away. It makes it extremely difficult. Um, a lot of people don't want to report things because they think they're in another country, but our federal agencies are making headway. Um, there's recently the three that are in the process for extradition. That's something new, but it's progress that we're making because people are making the reports, and that's what I'm extremely thankful that, you know, you guys are putting this story out there, but that the woods let us put this story out there. Um, I think this has started the tidal wave 
to get the information out there and let everybody know that we need these reports. We need to know, you know, the processes and how it's happening so we can make criminal cases and make an impact. The case you referred to is in Marquette, Michigan, and it's a case we're also profiling. I was in Marquette just a couple weeks ago. And because the criminals in that case also sent messages to the boy's girlfriend or a friend who was a girl, they were actually able to work it back, find the culprits arrest them in Nigeria, and now they're battling to get them extradited, which would be a first as far as I'm aware, because very rarely are there arrests that far away in a I, crime like this, right? I'm not aware of other ones. It, it happens so fast. The IP addresses change. You know, as soon as, as soon as they finish with a target, which that's what these kids are. They're just targets. They're, they're a job. They're an occupation. They're not a human being on the other end of these apps. Um, as soon as they, they finish, they just move on. And the IP addresses change, the usernames change, and it, it makes it difficult to track back, especially when we have people that aren't reporting. Where is this investigation? I, I know there are some things you can't talk about because they're active. It, it, it's easier in Marquette because the arrests have been made, and now we're down to extradition, so they have a little more. Right. fluidity in, right. in discussing the case, and I, I know you can't go all the way, but where do we stand with this? Well, I can tell you it's very unlikely that we're ever going to find anything um, from the Ivory Coast or Nigeria um, in this particular case. It's, it's not looking like it's ever going to pan out that way. Um, fortunately for us, we have a really good working relationship with Homeland Security, and they are tracking um, some of the other aspects involved in this case. So while I don't think we're ever going to have um, closure or any type of satisfaction um, for the family, uh, we are still moving forward and making progress. And I think we will potentially have a, at least some sort of re resolution that these a little bit of satisfaction. These rings always need somebody to collect the money or to help mm -hmm. with the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that would seem to be one way to crack this. The and money is always the... The money is the whole at the whole yeah. point of this. Yeah, the the, the victims oh aren't they're just money sources. Mm -hmm. So the gift cards and the cash apps and all that, um, the money has to be transferred some way. So that's that's mostly where we're going to have to focus our energy. And this happened on Instagram. Yes, correct. Right, which every kid has Instagram. You think it's fairly, you know, this wasn't benign. Some, right. Mm -hmm. And so, what? How often is it that? pictures, these videos that, that this is the threat, that they're going to send it to friends and family. Have they sent? Yes. Has it ever? Yes. They did send it to friends yes. and family. Yes. Uh -huh. They sent it wow. to my nephew and um, a young lady that was Jane's friends. And so wow. a lot of people need to understand um, even if your child doesn't become victim, that we have to be open and make other people aware yes. of it. And the reason being is it is exact example of James. So when they got the picture of James, um, they started sending James' picture to these other people, and they screenshot Instagram friends. So half of them can become victims if we don't do, if you don't send us money, this is what we're going to do to James. And then the other half are new victims. Mm. And even though Chief Wayne had um, got Instagram shut down right away, Guess what they still have? Mm -hmm. Screenshots of their Instagram. So when we go out and we talk, and I know we'll get into it later, but when we go out and we talk to these children, we make them aware that even though you may not have fell for it, it's okay to warn your friend mm -hmm. because your friend might fall for it. Right. And wasn't there an element of this where they had threatened to claim he was a pedophile or something? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and that had to play heavy on his mind, well, right? They, they told him everything. They told him he was going to get labeled a pedophile, he <laughs> was going to get arrested and thrown in jail, his friends won't want to be friends with him anymore, his parents wouldn't love him anymore, his friends would, you know, turn on him, he wouldn't be able to get in college. I mean, I mean everything. everything, like the worst yeah. things you could say. Their greatest fears. They oh, yeah, they pretty much told him his future was no, Over. no more. Might as well end it now. And, and, and going back to the pedophile thing, they use what we tell the kids mm -hmm. against them. Mm -hmm. So um, at one point, the police and, and higher authorities and um, teachers, they would say, don't do that. Don't show pictures of yourself. It's child pornography. You could go to jail, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Mm -hmm. And now they're using that as bait. 
So they told my son, you're going to be labeled a pedophile. You're going to jail. And he's heard that before, right? So it reinforces so it's, something it's, he's right. been told by and, people in authority. Exactly. So why right. go to the police and tell them I'm a victim when I'm going to go to jail? Right. They create isolation. Right. Um, every single suicidal warning, you have fear, isolation, no family, um, unemployment, um, uh, embarrassment. I mean, I could go on and on and on mm -hmm. that a child, my son in particular, or our son mm -hmm. in particular, did not have November 18th before they got to him. He had every single suicidal sign when he left this earth. All at once. All at once. And you have to understand that these are professional con artists and they know what they do. It's more than one person and they're going to attack our children. And that's why we have to consistently talk to our children. Don't always take things away from them. Give them tools that they need to overcome this matter. Because at the end of the day, they're still teenagers. Teenagers don't tell us everything. No. Well, especially boys who, who don't have the... No, it's not fully the intellectual developed. intellectual ability right. yet, mm -hmm. and some experts say it doesn't, doesn't happen until they're 23, 24, cool. 25 years okay. old, Correct. to foperceive that maybe these consequences aren't so dire. Right. Maybe there but is But even a way an out. adult would be afraid of, of all those things. I mean, no, I mean... If, well, they get you in the moment. Right. And that's the nature right. of the, the, the instant gratification mm -hmm. or instant danger of social media. Correct. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> how I relate it is how I related to adults, right? Um, two, James received 200 messages in 19 and a half hours mm. of straight torture from multiple people. Right. And a lot of people say, well, why didn't he come to you, right? Why didn't he just say something? Why did, why, did he believe that you wouldn't have his back, right? But if a woman came to a wife and said, I've been cheating with, my, with your husband, Here's a picture of them. And then she sent your wife 200 messages in 19 and a half hours how, she, how they said, he said, you're worthless. He mm -hmm. said, you'll never be anything. He said, um, I, he loves me better than you. 200 messages in 19 That's and a half hours. That's going to have an impact. The <clears throat> wife will not believe the husband. Not, I will, I, I, if anybody says differently. I believe a, you. That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, that, that's really, that drives it. So we have to understand, like, we just really need to hit hard that mm -hmm. we have to come down to the kids' mm -hmm. level. This is their way of life. But we have to give them tools to, to overcome these evil, evil, evil people. Because the reality is, and, and tragically, you know, James couldn't see his way through this, reality is he would have hugged him oh. and said, nobody cares, <laughs> and, and we told you. But you weren't going to ground him. You weren't going to say you're not going to college. You weren't going to say no. we're not going to dinner tonight. And none of that no. would have happened. You would have just said knucklehead. Don't do this again. I think again. we learned a lesson here. Yes. And like that would have been it. Else. He yes. would have been fine. Yeah. Right. And, and that's why, we, like, that's what we have to do as parents. Right. Like, right. our kids are going to do dumb stuff. And we're here to, like, coach them through it, to teach them better. We would have taught him how to act more appropriately online. Right. But we can't do that now. He's not here. Mm -hmm. Gabriel and I were talking the other day. It, it also seems to me that it's the really good kids who mm -hmm. fall victim to this. Who it really would. The, the lesser, you know, uh, uh, ambitious kids or ones who don't care about school or grades or sports, <laughs> they're less worried about Image. what their parents are going to think of them and what society is going to think of them in general. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the victims here tend to be the achievers. Yeah, I think... I, I think that is true to a sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think the people of um, underprivileged or don't have much in life, um, they still suffer. I think it's more in silence and um, they don't speak up. And it could be more of like beyond sex extortion, rape, uh, molestation, um, you know, physical abuse, mental abuse, how many of those people actually um, really speak up because they feel like no one cares? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it's 100% um, those kind of people who actually commit suicide, if that 
could even be led to that. We don't know just right. yet. But I do think that a lot of um, underprivileged people, they, they are left to suffer in silence. Well, and it, that, that begs the question, um, you know, if we know of four cases and nationally they're, they're only saying that they're aware of 12 suicides, I mean, how many other Jameses are out there? Mm -hmm. Well, the Internet Crimes Against Children, they actually um, stated that they went back and looked into um, the suicides that happened in 2022, and they found that there were additional people um, who were actually victims of sex extortion, right. more than that 12 that they um, initially thought. How are you guys doing? <laughs> we have our good days, we have our bad days. Yes. As best as we can, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, we wake up every day, go to work, or, you know, hang out, watch TV, go to movies, go visit people. We still try to have a normal life, just with it's a big hard, piece though. of missing, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess life will never be normal like you knew. No. No. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. And, and it's, it, it, it's horrible. Um, today, I'm doing better. Last month was crap. Throw it in the trash. Mm -hmm. um, we had prom that we couldn't experience. Mm -hmm. Mother's Day. Graduation. Father's Day. Father's Day. His birthday, when is his birthday? July 23rd. One month so from now. Coming up. 18, mm -hmm. he will be. Hmm. So had he come to you and told you what was going on, and as good parents, you would have, you know, walked him through that, what would the next step be to involve law enforcement? Like, what, what, what do parents do if, they, if your kid comes to you and says, this is what's going on, what, what do you do? Okay. First thing we want to do is get some screenshots um, before you even start heading our direction. Okay. Start saving everything as much as you can and hold on to those. Um, that prevents us from potentially losing some evidence if they start deleting the apps on the other side. Um, come report it to us. The first thing I can tell you, hands down, is no child is going to get in trouble for this. Right. Um, they are the That's victims. That's key, right? right. That is, is key. That is yeah. the right. thing. Right. It they didn't been, do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. They haven't done anything wrong, but it's been put out there that you know, if you're sharing these images, then you're sharing. That's not the case. We are not looking mm -hmm. to get these kids. We are looking to get the adults on the other end. Um, so once those, um, once we have all the documentation, um, we do what's called a preservation order. And then we're sending that information out to the apps, whether it's Snapchat or Instagram, and saying, we're working a case, you need to lock down all this information so we know that we're going to have it in the future when we can get the subpoenas, when we can get the search warrants, so we try and get all that information and then we begin our investigation. Um, one of the things we recommend is, is not having the friends list accessible right. to everybody. Um, but that's kind of a badge of honor with kids it to is. have mm -hmm. sure. 15, 20,000, right. 5,000, yeah. 500 yeah. friends. Um, and you know, you can't know all those people, but those friends lists and then who's active on your profiles, those become the easier targets mm -hmm. to send those images out because mm -hmm. sending it to a random person in your friends list, yeah. not as significant as impactful as sending it to your grandmother right. in your friends list or your cousin or somebody that's very active on your profile. Um, but once we get that information, then we can move forward in that, and then we suggest you know changing the password, changing usernames after we have started our investigation. I also, and we were talking about this before the show tonight, right. um, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has a service mm -hmm. and a guide mm -hmm. For parents mm -hmm. and kids yep. to take some of this stuff down, mm -hmm. and we're going to incorporate that in the, in the larger documentary we have coming out. We're, we're actually talking to the National Center for Missing Exploited Children to have them walk us through that. We have a we have a pretty good uh, relation working relationship with them, so so we're going to have them do that now. Your T-shirts, do it for James. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the organization. Tell me how it's developed since this tragedy, mm -hmm. and, and and what you've been able to accomplish with it. Well, we became official uh, January 13th of this year, and 
mainly our goal is to just talk to as many people that's willing to listen, you know, tell them, hey, this is what happened to us. You know, try to tell them, hey, if you're a child, we say, hey, stand up for yourself, speak out, you know, be vulnerable one more time and, you know, ask for help. You know, for the parents, uh, we pretty much the same thing. We tell them, hey, this is what happened to us, and this is how you could try to avoid it. This is what you should do or whatever. You know, give them different ideas of what they can do mm -hmm. to get in touch with people like Chief Wayne here. Uh, we just want to make sure nobody goes through what we went through. Yeah. We're, um, so. to date, um, we've done 67 interviews, speaking engagements. We've been into over 1,500, I'm sorry, 15 um, school, high schools. Um, we continue to move that on come in the new year. Uh, we've also made this card. As you can see, you can't tear it. Um, it's small enough for it to be in your purse. Um, the case of your cell phone, uh, wallet, book bag, and it gives kids um, specific instructions on what to do. James' last Google search was how to get an Instagram page shut down. Mm. So he was still trying to fight. He just didn't know what to do next. Um, so we, as, us as parents, we have options that we can give to the kids like take it down or crisis center or different things and we tend to hold on to that hoping that our child comes to us if they're ever in, in an emergency well james didn't come to us as we thought that he would so now we have to take matters into a different hand and make sure that we give tools to the kids to make sure that they don't end up like james the parents will be come, or come around and be involved, but at least we have given them a tool to help keep them alive until the parents find out about it. It also tells them that they matter. During our presentation mm -hmm. with high schools, m less than 25% raised their hand that they matter when we ask them that. Um, so we make sure that they scream it out loud at the end of our um, presentation. It also has 988 on there. Um, and we let them know that there is a crisis center that they can call or text to make sure that you can be heard if you're ever thinking about committing suicide or any other issues that you're having. We related to, we talk about James in sextortion, but we also tell them about rape and molestation and all the other things that they may become a victim of. And we make sure that we remind them that they are the victim. A lot of times they feel like they made the mistake and that they're not the victim because they're the ones who sent the picture. Right. So we make sure that they understand that as well. Um, we, I mean, our, our foundation is still evolving. Mm -hmm. um, we've given out over 10,000 of these. Wow, 10,000. Yes. And so it's, it's just an amazing That's a lot in a short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you've gone to the schools and talked about it, mm -hmm. are the majority of kids aware that this is going on or no? Some are. Some of them uh, have people that they know that's going through it. Some of them are going through it mm -hmm. or have been through it already. But kids mm -hmm. aren't stupid. They, yeah. they no. know stuff before we do. Yeah, right. especially <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. And, and so they do ask yeah. us questions um, like what can we do um, to help our friend who we know is a victim. Um, sometimes it leads more like they were thinking about committing suicide for other reasons. So, Which is fine. If yes. it gets them to think about that, yes. and it gets them through that critical period where they're yes. considering suicide, mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. sometimes they don't think about it again. They're past the crisis. Correct. Right. You know? And so that's what we try to like mm -hmm. encourage. Like, we're here for you. Um, we always encourage therapy. Um, we work with the behavioral, the local behavioral health system, um, organizations that are in the area that we speak to try to get them um, therapy and other help if they need it. Um, because even though they jump over the hurdle of being a victim of sex extortion, you're still um, a victim and you're still going through a lot of trauma and, and you'd have to be able to work that out. So we encourage that um, as well. Um, we, I mean, we, it, it's just... Um, you've, you've kept yourself very busy. Very yeah, busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. I mean, if you're, I, nothing good, you know, shouldn't happen. Mm -mm. But you're definitely making it something good to come out of it for well, we, sure. We, we can't do this without 
people like you bravely coming forward and, and we appreciate everything that law enforcement has done in this case and, and we're going to highlight that in, in our larger documentary but thank you for coming in tonight uh, from the bottom of our hearts this is a uh, a passion project for us and we'll we'll see it through and we'll hopefully not only educate people as you've been doing and your grassroots level but also hold some people accountable and when they bring these guys back I will be there, I promise you. Thanks. So, Anything else you want folks to know as we sit here tonight? Um, a couple of things. Sure. Um, just to add on to what you were saying, uh, these people over in Africa, they wanted us to hide. Mm -hmm. They You're wanted us right. to do yeah. that. We're not mm -hmm. doing that. So we're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter if our murderers get caught or not. I'm going to get into their pockets. I'm going to continue to raise awareness so that they get less and less money um, until someone is found. But the other thing is, is that we do have a walk run that's coming up August 5th, and it's to help raise awareness as well. Um, it's a walk run day of fun. So and that's going to be here in the Cleveland area? In Streetsboro. Street mm -hmm. Yep, okay. at the city park. Um, we'll be giving away over $10,000 in scholarships. All the high school and college kids have to do is just enroll in the walk run. That's it. Wow. And um, we will also have the day of fun. So there will be food trucks there. There will be um, Homeland Security there, Crisis Center. We'll have many self-defense classes, but also um, a volleyball tournament basketball tournament, a, a good day of fun, but we want the kids to come so that they can get the tools that they need to deal with the issues that they're dealing with right now. There's got to be a way we can share that information. We'll, we'll get it out there. We'll put it put on put all it, our yeah. social media platforms, mm -hmm. awesome. and we'll continue to do all that. Mm -hmm. and, and again, thanks so much, Timothy, Tamaya, Chief Wayne, thanks for being here. Any final thoughts from law enforcement standpoint? Uh, all I can hope is, while I don't want this to happen to anybody else, is if we do have families like this. I, they are an amazing couple. I am astounded by them on a daily basis. And without them, we would not have the information that we have. We got several reports that came in after. We've had several other cases come in um, involving sex-related crimes. Um, I, had a, I had a reporter ask me one time, why is Streetsboro being targeted? We're not being targeted. They helped us create an environment where these kids are coming forward, where people feel comfortable coming forward to report that stuff. And again, where I don't want other victims to be out there and other families to have to deal with this, all I can hope for is that there are other people that can speak out and give the information like they have, because we wouldn't be in the place where we are without their willingness mm -hmm. to come forward. Well, that brings up a good point, because as you know, we're not just doing the documentary series for us, we're doing a special version that we're going to hand out to schools across the country. And so teachers, administrators, and uh, anybody, parents, can reach out directly to us here at True Blue, and we'll make sure that their mm -hmm. school district gets it. So thank you again. Thank you so much. God bless. You guys are amazing and strong and an example of, of you know, having dignity and tragedy and a call to action, so we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you for co-hosting, as always. Thank I you. Thank yeah. you. Love being here. Covered a lot of territory tonight. And thank you for watching. We're going to um, have more new takedown episodes coming up soon. And uh, we appreciate you checking in with us. So, as always, stay tuned to True Blue. Many new documentaries in the pipeline. You'll see them soon. And more takedown predator investigations. Have a good night. I'll be watching.